Wow. I'm a girl. It's pretty cool. I haven't been a girl for that long, which is kind of a strange sentence. 2023 is a pretty cool year. It's been a little while. Or maybe technically I've been a girl forever, depending on your thinking. What am I talking about? I got a GRC. I got a new birth certificate. Official. Legal. A GRC is like a UK only thing, I think. And it's like an official document that you can get to say that you are a new gender or yeah, like this is you now, you get this official document and it is a gender recognition certificate. So the UK government surprisingly recognized my gender. Very nice of them. And using the GRC, you get a new birth certificate, which is then like the most official that you can be. I have a female birth certificate. It says F on my birth certificate. Awesome. Hotly debated thing. Some people are very mad about the fact that you can even do that, which is kind of confusing because it is realistically just a piece of paper. Like it is just a piece of paper that says where you're born, who your parents are, and you know, your, your gender and stuff. Who ca I don't know why people are mad about that. It makes no sense to me personally. There are also people who are upset because like, what well, if you go to the doctor, you need, they need to know, they don't need to know. They need to know the gender that corresponds to the hormones inside your body. So like me, full of estrogen, they need to know that because it affects medication and a range of other things that could affect you that wouldn't affect you if you had a testosterone body. But if you're watching me, you probably know all that stuff. So we're gonna skip past that. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because it's kind of a rare thing in the UK. It's kind of a hard thing to get. I want to talk about the process of getting it and why I decided to get it. So maybe you could decide for yourself or if you're not from the UK and you don't care, you could just listen to me talk or learn something about this hellhole. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on something. The UK, not great for trans people. I don't know if that's like, you know, common knowledge really, but yeah, just saying, not great. We have to do a two year process to get a gender recognition certificate. You have to have a bank with your current pronouns, uh, the ones you intend to use for the rest of your life. You cannot use non-binary ones. They only recognize binary pro pronouns. So, you know, like he, him, she, her. You need a multitude of evidence. So you need bank statements, like mobile phone bills, energy, electricity. You can't use council tax because you can't change your gender with the council. Just anything that you can change before you can get a GRC. So yeah, like, you know, take out a credit card with your new gender, those, and you need to document those and you need like evidence for every two months, but it can't be the same evidence. So bank statements, two months, and then energy bills, two months for two years which is kind of, you know, that's a lot. That's kind of nonsense. But if you can do that, then the next thing you have to do is your GP has to write you like a referral of, yes, this is a trans person. And then you need an official NHS doctor of their list of magic NHS doctors that are the only ones that are accepted. Except that isn't quite true because um, certain ones it'll never happen. I'm with gender GP. Any of the doctors that can write it there, they'll never accept it because they don't like gender GP. But I went with a private clinic called Gender Care, which had a, you know, psychologist, like a specialist who did the assessment, the review, whatever, to, you know, have to, I don't know, diagnose me transgender. And they accepted that. They said this, you know, this person's official, they're not on the list, but whatever. They don't update the list and they don't keep track of the list. So I don't think they really care that deeply. You know, you just, if you're in the UK, use somebody from the UK. And like I said, that needs to be like a psychological report. They have to diagnose you trans. But luckily, most of those like psychologists are like, you know, they're on our side, they're on our team. So it's not like a, it's not a difficult process. It can be expensive. My diagnosis was 300 pounds. So 300 pounds for somebody to talk to me about my entire life history and then go, yeah, probably trans, sure. That kind of sucks. And then to top it all off, you pay five pounds, you put it in an envelope 
and you send it to them. The five pounds is kind of the kicker. That's really funny that you have to pay that. And then uh, it takes, I think, 21 weeks. I don't remember if it actually took that long. I should have tracked, but I didn't track. It takes 21 weeks to get your results. <laughs> your results. And it's like, ah, you're a girl. Um, and they say whether they accept you or don't accept you, which is very stupid and unfair. They didn't accept bi non-binary, which really sucks. The easiest way to kind of get through the process is to just be as binary as possible. So if you're not, you kind of have to just fake it to get through because it's, it's very difficult to explain complex gender identities to, you know, like a guy, a cis guy who's just there to try and figure out if you're trans or not. I am quite binary, very binary, I would say. So for me, it was quite easy and I'm very fortunate for that. But yeah, I would say just kind of, just kind of lie, just kind of, shh, just kind of, yeah, binary, you know, she, her, I love it. And you'll get through the process and then it, you can do whatever. Once you get your result, <laughs> results is so strange. Once you pass or fail the woman test or the man test, they, um, they then send out a birth certificate, which can take a while, but it actually was really quick for me. It took like two weeks and then you get a new birth certificate, ah! which is cool. Very cool. Um, some of the reasons you might want to do this is you can change complicated stuff. Like you can be a woman to the council, which is not really important, but it does help. You can basically change everything. You are now fundamentally that gender. Nobody can say otherwise. Um, and you get to change all your stuff and it's, it's kind of helpful. You can change your passport and your driving's license without it. So it's not like, you know, it's not the most essential. If you don't want to pay the money or you can't wait, you know, I wasn't going to originally. The reason that I decided to do this is because the UK sucks. I may have mentioned it. It's pretty bad here. And because it's bad and it seems to be maybe getting worse and trans people are used as like a scapegoat for all of this country's problems and sometimes all of the world's problems. I decided that it would be best to officialize this gender. They were talking about banning trans women from toilets and private businesses, something that won't happen, by the way, that's not going to happen. But if it did happen somehow, then they also said that the trans women that would be allowed in female spaces are ones that have a GRC. So I kind of felt the need slip under the radar. You know, I feel like a spy. I'm on the other team. I will relay information between us. The reasons I wasn't going to do it originally is mostly like the cost of like, not the money cost, but the time cost. Having to figure out all of those bills and stuff, having to find a psychologist, having to wait for an appointment for that, having to get everything together to apply. Like I have ADHD. That's just hard. It's a lot of like, waiting around, booking appointments. I'm not good at that. And originally I wasn't going to do it. And I think the only reason I did do it is because I realized one day like, oh, it's been two years, it's been over two years. And I have all of these bank statements and credit card bills and all this stuff. I've got everything. So you don't need to really plan for it. It can just happen by accident. If you're just changing your accounts anyway, because you know, you're living as you, it can just happen. You can just fall into your lap. Two years into your transition, you're like, oh, cool, I can do this now. I would like to make it very, very clear. This is not essential. You do not need this to be happy or to be yourself. You are still your self, regardless of a tiny piece of paper that means nothing. But you know, some people do want it. And I do think that maybe it is a good idea safety wise, but you know, that's kind of it, really. I think the UK has one of the hardest or harder processes for changing your gender, like legally and officially. I think in some states in the US, you just kind of ask and they're like, yeah, cool, sure. And other kind of some European countries, you just kind of do the same thing. I have a friend in Norway and you just kind of ask them and they're like, yeah, cool. So it is like, you know, it's Turf Island for a reason. They, they do make it hard, but it is not impossible. And it's something to, decide for yourself whether you're going to go through with it or not and start 
gathering your resources and set aside that five pounds. It's important to say that in the UK, this is the only way to change your birth certificate. This is the only thing that you can do to change it officially. There's no kind of workaround. You have to do the GRC. You have to do an interview process with like your psychologist and you need to find a nice GP who is willing to write you a letter to say that you're living as yourself and you intend to until you die. It's quite a rare thing. Only 2% of the UK have one, apparently, which is a really small number. Um, I think there's only like 100,000 trans people in the UK, something like that, last that was checked. I think the reason that people don't have it is because it seems incredibly overwhelming and almost impossible, and people think there's this incredibly long wait time. It is long, but it's, you know, it's not, it's not as long as surgery wait time. It is beneficial. I also think that people just don't care because it's just a piece of paper and that is completely valid. It is just a piece of paper. I feel the same as I did before it, but it is really reassuring to have it and to know that I'm kind of a little bit more protected from horrible, evil scapegoat government. Not naming any names or anything. I hope that this was helpful and that it provided you with some more information about the arduous but achievable process. You ha legally have to watch more videos because um, Tory government said so. You have to, it's, it's a law now. You have to, sorry. Bye.